I was an outlaw in 1967 to 71. LGBT were outlaws and they were also um, considered by the APA to be mentally ill. I liked the idea of coming to Stanford because there were three men to one woman and I figured, you know, if any place could make me straight, it would be Stanford. I was editor of the Stanford Daily. Uh, I had a regular column in the newspaper, so my picture was in the paper every week, and people from around campus would come up and say, hi, John, and I'd have no idea who they were. So this made me even more scared to come out because I figured somebody will have something on me that they could use against me. I didn't want to be gay. I didn't want to have to go through what it meant to be gay. You know, so uh, I was actually very homophobic. My freshman year, I had sort of a breakdown. <laughs> Ended up... Uh, uh, at the health center, um, went into therapy wanting very much to change what I knew was just who I was. When I was 15 I tried to kill myself and because um, I, I simply did not see a place for me in the family that my parents have created and to be completely honest they didn't see a place for me in their family. I had role models. Um, I had role models uh, that were people that had walked kind of a pioneering path, who had been active at Stonewall, who had been active in Los Angeles, who fought for the right to have a gay pride parade. Arturo Islas, who was a professor here, kind of picked me out. I think he figured out I was gay. I don't know how he knew. I had long, long hair down to past my waist and but he picked me out, I became friends with him, I became friends with some of the other gay professors. I had access to Larry Friedlander in both the English department and the theater department, a character. A TA, Eric Wittinghoff, who later went into public health, and he, was, he took, took me out to the women's bars in San Francisco. I borrowed the idea of a friend of mine because I was not 21. And he kind of went to the different bars to figure out which would be the ones that I'd be the most comfortable with. I was thinking this weekend, what an influence and hero. Um, it's not something I told him, but what an influence and hero he is in terms of my whole perception of what a gay person is and why I did not have to go through a lot of pain and identity crises and um, issues of self-worth. I spent so much time, so much time trying to be a part of their family and trying to be what they wanted and every time they invited me back into their family it was like under this context of like you can come back but you have to be this thing that we need you to be. And I could never be that. I spent 10 years fighting my church, fighting my family, fighting myself to reconcile what it was like before I came out and what life was like after I came out. And I've had to make some really tough choices in my life. And um, one of them was to say to my parents, like, I love you and I'll love you forever. That'll never change. Um, and I will always be here for you. And you call me when you are ready to have a gay daughter. Would you like everybody to know right now that you identify as gay, lesbian, bisexual, or transgender? And the question or the challenge for you is, are you going to walk across the line? Are you going to stand in that wilderness where nobody is? And are you going to declare that? So I, and surprisingly enough, another kid, decided to declare that and we were hella scared about you know how people would react you know they were they were shocked they they were just like you're the first person who's ever mentioned this or talked about this or any of that um and they 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 heard it and they were just like uh, tell me more you know let's let's talk about this and it was actually kind of awesome because they were they were still very supportive because I was kind of in this glass closet. Like, yeah, I like show tunes, I like Liberace, I like opera, but of course I'm not gay, no. Um, it, it was more like, thank you for being honest with yourself. The respect went up.
because I thought that I could dupe everyone. And in some sense, that wasn't quite what I could do. After that initial just saying it, it was so much better. I could talk about my life a lot more. I wasn't so closed. I could say, you know, I'd been on a date or I'd seen somebody or and now I bring guys home. Or... They love me for me and not because of my sexuality. They loved me for me. And that was the first point in my life where I was like, this is okay. <laughs> Look at me and how happy I am and how good I feel about myself. It may have taken 70 years, but look at how good I feel about the progress in our country. Look at how I feel emotionally about uh, Stanford Pride. That's where you're going to be. That's where you're going to go. You'll find love, you know? You'll find the person that you want to spend the rest of your life with, and that is your, you know, your soulmate, your life partner, your second health, deuxième moitié in French. You have to fight to be happy in this life. And that's something like everybody kind of grows up thinking that it's like some kind of entitlement to have the life that you want, but that you actually really have to fight for it. And the way that you fight for it is by really being honest to who you are and not just fitting in in every single way. There are people who will love you just as you are. And Carly loves me just as I am. I'm grateful that I didn't take my dad's advice forever, which is this truth thing doesn't work, because I'm here to say that it gets better because the truth thing does work. If you're true to yourself, if you are fortunate to be lucky in love and work at relationships, and in my case, I wanted to be a parent, and I am, and I treasure those relationships, I couldn't be happier. I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade those early days for nothing. I wouldn't trade those early struggles. I wouldn't trade the questioning. I wouldn't trade that doubt and that uncertainty for nothing. Because I've been an out lesbian now for over 30 years. And it's fantastic. Having survived um, attempt, attempt, an attempt at suicide that the attempt was the best thing that ever happened to me. The surviving it was the best thing that ever happened to me. Um, and I just, I'm thankful now and if I could, if I could somehow convey that, you know, to, to myself and to someone else. We need you. We need you to hang in there. We want you. We want you to help us make this a better world for all of us. It does get better. But the way people respond and perceive what being gay is has so dramatically changed. You can have whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah, do you want kids? That's okay, do it. You We're going to do it. If you don't, you want a house, you want um, careers, you want to be open and gay in your careers, you want to be open and gay totally. in your community, out in your community, that's okay. I've seen the world change so much I, in just the, the 20 years that I've thought about these issues. You know, it, it's really been different and you'll feel so much better, believe it or not, you feel so much better after you say, I'm gay.